Hey everybody, welcome back to Stamping School. I bought this because I love everything in it. I love owls. Well, I don't know if I love coyotes, but I do love bears. I live in the mountains of North Carolina and we have all of these in our woods here. So I thought it would be fun to use this one. The artwork on these is great because they stamp exactly like this. So the stamps are etched. Let me just show you what they look like when you stamp them. Beautiful. So they're already etched. You can stamp them and be done the way it is. You could stamp them in Stazon and watercolor them, or you can stamp them in a dye-based ink and do a watercolor on them that makes them bleed a little, and that's what we're gonna do today. So I think you can see the difference of these two. This is my watercolor bear that sort of uh, has a watercolor wash on it, and this is just stamped, and these are both them with the black memento ink. So let me show you how to do that. Now, to do this, you really need watercolor paper to make it look right and to, so that the water doesn't pill up. We sell watercolor paper in the annual catalog. It comes in pieces like this. It's um, Fluid 100 watercolor paper, page 141. I can get two of these out of one piece, and I actually cut them with the new deckled rectangles, these dies right here. These are in the annual catalog also, and they're a nice big set for $30 if you like that deckled look. But watercolor paper is just heavier. It, it takes the, the water without pilling up. And what you wanna look for is like a 140 pound cold press. That's what I like to use. So if you're, in, if you're at the art store, the craft store, and you happen to see uh, watercolor paper and you wanna pick it up, if it's cold pressed, 140 pound, it's very close to this paper. For this size right here, I'm gonna use the second largest one. And just for size, and it's about three and a half by five, I'm gonna show you the largest one will fit on a regular A2 size card. It's not exactly even. I want it to, I want to cut my card off maybe an eighth of an inch down here so it layers perfectly. But you get the idea, that's the largest one will fit a layer on a card. And the smallest one is about an inch by about two and three quarters, two and three eighths. So it's a nice layering of size. They do layer large. So it's gonna be a, a larger layer, which is more like a, uh, like a half inch layer or a quarter inch all the way around. So that's kind of how they how they layer. So it's a larger, larger layer. But what I did on my card is I used this one and then did a solid black layer just a little bit bigger and then put it on some designer paper. You can sort of alternate your layers. All right, watercolor paper and then something to add water. <laughs> so. So Stampin' Up! has Aqua Painters. They're a set of three in the catalog. I think they're on page 129. These I had left over from last year. They work fine. If you don't have Aqua Painters, you can use a little bowl of water and a little paintbrush. First thing we wanna do is draw a little line, a little border, basically, all the way around with your wet paintbrush, with your wet brush, and just kinda of get that filled in a little. You're not gonna see anything because it's just water. But I want a border. I don't want it to go all the way to the outsides. I want to have a little bit of relief around. For my water, I'm going to be using Balmy Blue and my Sky. But I'm also going to be using a darker blue. But first, I want to get this Balmy Blue kind of laid down. It's going to spread, but it usually won't spread past the line that you've drawn. That's one of the reasons to just start by drawing your little rectangle or your border of where you wanna have your watercolor. Don't worry if it's messy, just get a little bit on there and then stop, walk away. Don't add too much. Now I'm really missing my Misty Moonlight but the starry sky is okay. If I water it down a little bit, I really miss that medium blue. I hope they bring that back next year. I have a feeling that they might be doing a color refresh next year. I don't know, but it's been five years where they kind of look at all the colors and take out the ones that might be a little outdated. And I hope they bring back the misty moonlight because I really like it. 
So just drop this in. Don't worry about it being too perfect. I'm just making this a little bit darker. You can kind of see what it looks like once it's dry. And then I'm taking a little bit of the soft succulent because that's what color my trees are. And right along my tree line, right here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of green. Okay. Now this is where you're either really patient <laughs> or you use your heat tool and you dry it. And I am not patient, so. I'm gonna dry it. So it won't be cool to the touch anymore. And it should be nice and dry before we do the stamping right here. Now we're gonna do some watercolor stamping. I'm using mountain air, any little tree rows that you have or trees, you can even do bigger trees in the background, mountains. I'm gonna do this row of trees. And I don't want it to go all the way across. So I'm gonna stop about an inch in on each side. I'm gonna use my soft succulent to put the ink on. I'm gonna stop, leave a little bit of the sides uninked. And I'm gonna take my aqua painter. You don't want a ton of water on it, so have something nearby you can kind of dab it off. And just go, and I'm gonna drag the ink around sort of just doing little downstrokes. Oop, not too far, Linda. I almost went all the way across right there. I have a little Otis hair right there. There we go. Okay. Otis is my dog. Just, you know, <laughs> how it gets over here, I have no idea. Okay. And then right through the middle here, Stamp it. Now it's wet, but the watercolor paper can handle it, but let it let it soak in a minute. Okay, give it a few seconds here, and then lift. Oh, I love it. Now you can dry it again, or just kind of let it soak in. Now it's a big difference. It's just sort of a, a watercolor wash in the background, and if you want to make it just a little bit more blobby, you can always go back over it again. I like a little bit of the definition showing, but you can just move this around because these inks are, are um, watercolor-based inks, so they're water-based, so they blend wonderfully. Next is the bear. Now, for this bear, I stamped him in the Memento Black, which is not waterproof, but you could always stamp him in Stazon which is waterproof, and then you can go over and watercolor him if you want to, but I really like the soft look of that and how it's all blended together. See the difference? And on watercolor paper, you're not gonna get all the details, so it's kinda nice to watercolor wash him. I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna watercolor him the same way we did the trees, but then I'm gonna stamp over him again once he's dry. Let's see how that works. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm gonna bring my Stamparatus in. Bring in my bear stamp. I want him right about there. It'll be good. Right there. All right, pick that up. All right, let's ink him up in the memento. And the good thing, you know what, we can always stamp him twice if we don't get enough ink on it. But see the etching on that? That's completely inked, but it just has those light areas and dark areas. All right, ink him up. And you're gonna see because the watercolor paper has a little bit of texture to it. See, he doesn't look so good. We're gonna make him look like this. So wet brush, not too wet. And you're just gonna blur the lines Blur the lines, and I'm going up because I don't want to go down and mess up. And if you feel like you've got too much water, go to your paper towel or whatever you have and see like right in through here, it's gonna be lighter because the stamp itself, the image was lighter. Now you know we have blender pens too. Those are the really fine tipped um, glycerin marker. They look like a marker. Looks like this. 
So if you have a really fine area and you're afraid to do the aqua painter, get that blender pen because that will give you that light blended look, but it won't be too much. See, I wanna just make his muzzle a little bit lighter, okay? Let me just clean that off. All right. All right, I need a little bit more water. Now I know it's going right over where some of those trees were, but the black is darker, so it works out. And isn't that cool? Get as close to the edge as you can so it still looks watercolored. There we go. Okay, now when he dries, he looks like this, but I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna stamp over it one more time and see if I can get a little bit more definition like where his legs are. So I wanna get uh, this leg definition and some of these marks. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's dry. Wish me luck. Here we go. Now it should stamp in the same place because <laughs> that's why we use the Stamparatus. Go back over it again. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Okay, I like it. It gave all the definition, darkened it up a little bit. Yeah, I like it, it's good. So here's the difference. You can see he's got a little bit more definition here. And if I wanted to go back and take out some of that texture, I certainly can, but I kind of like it. I'm just gonna sort of dab a little bit. Boy, you can fiddle with this all day. Sometimes you gotta know when to walk away. Now all I have left to do is add a little bit more blue just because it can be darkened up just a wee bit. Now just be careful <laughs> not to run into the bear because he will bleed a little. But I wanna have a little bit of the blue. He needs to be walking in the water. Let's pretend he's salmon fishing or something. And we just need a little bit more activity or movement in the water, just a little, especially around his paws. Let's just get a little bit more movement down here and just dot it in. That's what's so great about watercolor. You don't have to be perfect. Just a little bit up here. Now I've got, I've got a finger smudge right there, but luckily my sentiment will go right on top. All right. In that little set, there's some birds. I stamped some birds. And then you don't have to watch me put it all together. This is what I did on the inside. But I took um, soft succulent card base. And then this paper is that new penciled paper from Stampin' Up! in the annual catalog. But on the back, they have all these really great black and white designs. So I put a layer here. And I cut a smaller one out for the inside. And then my layer of black cardstock. And then this guy would go on top. I added a little circle to a great guy. That, that comes in that set also. And on the inside, you mean so much to me. And there it is, watercolor stamping. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time. See it, learn it, stamp it.